Okay, so we've turned on the main power, we've turned on the temperature, and we've let it warm up to 160, which is the temperature that you're going to want your 404 3D PLA recycled mix to uh, extrude at. So we've got the mixture here, mixed it all nice and well, and we're going to start pouring it in. You're going to want to make sure your extrude button is off at this point. You're going to turn that on later. Okay, we'll leave it at that. At this point, you're going to turn on your extrude button. So now that we've got like a consistent uh, extrusion here, I'm going to grab this and just bring it over to that um, this hole here. Turn on the drive button here. So that these wheels start, send it through. Send it through this hole here. And then allow it to keep running until to the other side. This is the this is the hard part. This is the traverse mechanism which basically allows the filament to sort of go, you know, in the wind back and forth so that way it's not spooling all in one direction and skipping and things like that. It sort of allows a, a consistency that you want to get in your spool. Uh, and basically the way it works, it uses a little screw and it just spins back and forth. But uh, you're going to want to watch this thing because sometimes it pops out in use and you're going to have to sort of like push this thing back in. So just, you want to watch for that. <clears throat> Every once in a while it screws up on you. Uh, and this is the button and the mechanism to control it. You've got an off and on switch. Uh, I just recommend keeping it on all the time. And then you've got your speed. And this is really at your own discretion. I just keep it up pretty high. as little of a gap as possible between the edge of the filament and the edge of, of the wall of this top uh, edge of the caliper. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to use the drive to basically decrease the speed so that way it's pulling less and then you're getting a, a thicker uh, diameter. You're going to want to do, you're going to want to have 30 seconds and about 30 seconds to a minute in between each uh, reset of settings, so that way it gives it time, it gives this time to feed you uh, the diameter that changed in accordance to differentiation and speed. Does that makes sense. If, you, if, the, if your filament is too small or if it's too large, it will not work in the printer. So this part is probably the most important part: is getting this diameter right. And the reason why I put it at 1.77 instead of 1.75 is so I can get a little bit closer to 1.75 and still let it feed through this at the same time. If it's a little smaller, that's better than being too large because otherwise it's going to jam the printer. You're going to have to take the whole printer apart. It's going to be a real big issue for you. So I'm just going to wait until it catches a little bit. And that way I know that it's as close to the diameter as I want as possible. It's never going to be perfect. The closest you can do is get as close to it as possible. So you see that it's catching a little bit. It's pulling it just slightly. See that? So that's when I know that it's probably a little bit too big because it's catching a lot. So I'm going to back it up a little bit. Wait until it pops back in. I'm going to increase the drive speed here. Just a tad. There we go. And just fuddle around with it until it, until it works. It just takes a little bit. But once you, have, once you have your consistent diameter, you can sort of let it run without checking it too periodically. Once you first start doing this, you're going to want to sort of 
babysit it for a little bit until you know how the machine actually works.